research project and in the second part I will focus on the methods used in the Faroe Islands to locate Viking Age burials and to present the case studies and then in the third part I will talk about the burials in Chetnowik and Nasamte and then I will end with some preliminary conclusions. The focal point under consideration for this PhD project is the last period of the prehistoric era in Scandinavian terminology, the Viking Age, and uh, marks the beginning of Viking and Norse settlements in the Faroe Islands, Iceland and Greenland, and uh, the Norse colonizers arrived in the Faroes around AD 800. So this research project has a focus on the Northern Islands, Fuklai, Svojnai, Vijay, Borai, Kulnai and Kalsai in the Faroe Islands, and uh, essential to this uh, research project is the aim to get a better understanding of Viking Age burials in the Faroe Islands. Since only two, two certain three possible Viking Age burial sites have been found in the Faroe Islands so far, the religious beliefs and mortuary practices <clears throat> is not very well known. Uh, so this lack of knowledge about the early burial heritage in the Faroe Islands it leaves a huge gap of our understanding about Viking Age burial practices and also an understanding of the Viking Age society. Um, the island's geology consists of a series of three basalt layers interspersed with volcanic ash, and it's therefore the steep mountainside in the Faroe Islands look like stone shells, um, several stone shells on top of each other, and <clears throat> with different layers. And these islands give the uh, these layers give the Faroe Islands the special landscape characteristic with steep mountains, valleys, narrow fjords and sounds, which also separates the islands from each other. At the initial settlement, the land appropriate for settlement and farming was concentrated around coastal areas. The settlements in the Faroe Islands are characteristic by farms, situated close to the seashore along the coast and fjords. And here you see two examples from Viking Age farms, um, which are Fuiwig and Larvig. <coughs> and uh, they are close to the sea and they're also close to streams. And the farms which grow, soon grow into villages already in the Viking Age were surrounded by grassland. And the people lived of farming, <coughs> uh, by fishing, falling, Whaling and cattle and sheep breeding has had also great importance. In Lauerburg, there were probably three farmsteads, which were Oma, Vigear, and Toftanes. <coughs> or th these farms and these cores, they probably remained more or less unchanged until the 18th century. At Kvuiburg, uh, uh, the farm near a Toft, it was probably not the only farm. Another old farm in the village is the farm Frami Fotna, and uh, Frami Fotna lies in higher ground in the village, while Nivia Toft lies on lower ground, closer to the sea. Arne Toshtason, archaeologist in the Faroes, he argues that close by all church sites it's possible to find a large settlement farm in one village. And he therefore brings forward the argument that uh, a third of farm could be in Fuiwuk, but on the other side of the stream, which is called Achishchetaye, which is close to an old church site. So the limited areas um, were important for summer grazing and shielding activities, the inland areas. 
This is seen in place names and also archaeological remains. The outfield areas provided for grazing, peat, turf and other material. Less than 5% of the land is cultivated today and most is within the infield and uh, most of it is improved hayfields. So there has been a new dating in the pharaohs, which I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard about. It is found under a Viking age settlement uh, where pre-Viking activity has been dated in the form of patches of burnt peat ash in a windblown sand deposit in the village Santa. So this is evidence of human activity in the pharaohs 300 to 500 years before the significant colonization in the 9th century. Well, in comparison to our understanding of settlement patterns, our understanding of religious beliefs and mortal practices in the Faroe Islands remains very poor. Only two Viking Age grave sites have been excavated in the Faroe Islands, one on the northernmost village of Chutnavik on the island Streymoy, and one on the southern coast of Samte on the island Samtoy. A third Viking Age burial might be located at a Bölhusflatte, a Kvalpa, in the most southern um, island in the Faroes, which is called Surai. Concerning the latter site, uh, the National Museum of the Faroe Islands, Chosana, received information about finds of human bones on an eroded slope, which had been discovered by a small boy. These bones were examined and dated to around year 1000. With verified Viking Age burials in the Faroe Islands only numbering three, the number of burials in the, the Faroe Islands is conceptually considerably less than in the other North Atlantic islands, such as in Iceland, where some 300 pagan burials at around 157 sites have so far been recorded. And due to the lack of research in this area in the Faroes, it is not known how representative the known grave sites are in terms of how and where the first settlers in the Faroes buried their dead. So my PhD research, which started in March 2015, is aimed at filling in this missing gap of knowledge. So in the next part, I will focus on um, the methods used for locating burials in the Faroes, and also I will present a case study from the island Kutloi. During this project, I have used different approaches and methods to fill in this gap of missing knowledge on the location of Viking Age burials. In the first stages of my research, I conducted archival research at the National Museum in the Faroes. Um, and this was due to, to review the archives for data that would be useful for me to direct my initial survey work. Relevant archives include survey collected by uh, Svede Dahl and also thereafter partly followed up by Arne Torstadsson and Sumen Arke. And Sumen Arke has so been very helpful in directing me and helping me during this archival research. And uh, this archival material includes information on different topics such as uh, settlements, ethnographic information, reported burials and so forth. Part of my work has been to conduct interviews with local people as well, but only a few of them could provide with me with any definitive information about Viking Age burials. So a very important aspect of this project is also to collect the knowledge people have about their long-term social memory of their culture, villages and landscapes, and including how Viking Age burials might fit into this social memory. Before the field survey and excavation, I had prepared the survey by looking through archives, information on place names, old settlements, old photos, aerial photographs and so forth. So in relation to historical sources, now I'm going to take uh, Fukloi as an example. Uh, Fukloi is mentioned in Hunta Braunum, which is called the dog letter. So this is a law letter, which is about a system on how to organize dog keeping in the Faroe Islands in the Middle Ages. It's estimated by scholars to be written between 1350 and 1400. So, and it's found at the monastery, um, uh, it's called Kongsbjörgin, the King's Book. And um, it mentioned, this letter, it mentioned that in two infield areas of Bukloi, there are allowed two dogs. 
it does not mention the villages by name, but it's thought that it is the villages uh, Hatawuk and Chishcha. And this has relevance because these two villages probably have their origins going back to the evil, medieval period and possibly also the Viking Age. Therefore, these two villages are good potential for locating Viking Age burials. And uh, there hasn't been so much uh, modern industrialization in these places, so therefore it was also a good uh, idea to take them as part of my research. So I conducted my own field survey, and during my survey I recognized several places that do stand out as possible burial sites. These observations are among other things based on the topography of the landscape, the survey conducted, and the, arch the archival research, and the comparison with Adolf Ruriksson models for Icelandic burials, and observation and analysis of burial locations in Shetland, Orkney, and Norway. So um, I will, since Adolf models was also one of the um, things that I considered when I was conducting field survey, I will mention it here. So here is a map showing the distribution of burials in Iceland, which I'm sure you're quite familiar with. And as you can see, the number is much higher than in the Faroes. Uh, during his research, Adolf Fruiksson and his team collected topographic features to fieldwork in a systematic way. And the results show that the location of Viking Age burials in Iceland can be divided into three main groups. So I am aware that many in the audience will be aware of um, Adolf Ruizson landscape model, but I'm just summarizing it here very briefly uh, for the sake of people who may not be so familiar with the landscape model. So based on his research, Adolf brought forward uh, a model on the burials in Iceland are located. So according to Adolf, the burials in Viking Age Iceland share a common framework in where the location is related to the farms and then where the burials have a local and domestic character. So they are identified uh, three basic types called A, B and C. And type A represents burials located on or near the farm borders. Type B represents the opposite to type A, which includes the burials located in the heart of the property. And type C concerns the burials that are close to the lines of communication, such as roads. In 1956 and 1974, Christian Altia observed that the average distance between the graves of a farm and the farm is often half a kilometer. This estimation is very precise because in re examining all the burials, the average distance that was measured in Adolf Ruiz's research was 455 meters. And according to him, uh, the distance alone does not reveal much about the significance of the location, but the distance and its variation make sense when it is placed into context with the aspect of farms, boundaries, and tracks. So these were also some of the uh, ideas that I was working with while doing landscape uh, survey. So in the Faroe Islands, the relative location of uh, Viking Age settlement, settlement boundaries and old roads, as well as place names and the results of interviews with local people, they were all considered. So the normal physical uh, evidence of a Viking Age burial, which in Scandinavia includes mounds and stone settings, they are not visible in the Faroe Islands landscape. So this is probably due to cultivation, road construction and landslip. Therefore, more research was needed in the form of geophysical surveying to decide which places would be best for test excavation. So a few areas were then selected, and in the following I will present a case study from the island of Ukloi, with a focus on Chishja. And on the slide here you see Fukloi, and the villages Hattarvuk and Chishja, and in the back is Kashvuk, and the island in the, which you see in the background is Fukloi. Is we, uh, sorry. Fukloi has a very steep uh, terrain and there are not many good landing places. In the archival research of the island Fukloi, I went through Sverdal's archives, historical maps and photos from the villages. As mentioned before, Fukloi is, is mentioned in the dog letter 
And the two villages mentioned in this letter are taught by scholars, especially historians, to be interpreted as being Hatawig and Chishja. No large Viking Age farms have been excavated on the islands, but there's evidence in the landscape for activity going back to the Viking Age. And there are also two shielings on the island, one in Skashwig and the other one in Landsdaler. So therefore this island was chosen as a possibility to locate Viking Age burials. And I conducted a survey in, in, all of the, in all of the island. So another name for, the, for this village is uh, Chishibelsdaur. According to ethnographic sources, that's what elderly people used to call this place, but it's no longer in use. And I asked the people living there and they had just heard perhaps it once be mentioned when they, was, when they were children. According to the linguist uh, Krisha Matras, Belstower means a settlement with two or three main farms. So in Chishja, burials were discovered in connection with an extension of an old churchyard. The burials were, that were discovered had an east-west alignment, but in two of the burials there were objects found for weaving and for burning light. In the village Chishcha, there's also a place where people meet, which is called Avecino. And according to legend told by the villagers, there is, it used to be a burial ground for the Black Death. So I also heard quite recently that uh, about 50 years ago, when my men were doing construction work in this area, they found a skull while digging. Uh, so it was not reported to the authorities. And in a certain area of Echno, children were told not to go or dig for worms because uh, parents thought that the soil was contagious. And close by, on the left of the picture, uh, on the small hill, a child found a cross, uh, a stone with a small cross incised on it, in it. Yeah, so I will now show a couple of examples for possible burial farms, which could have their origin back to the Viking Age. So, because of um, in doing so, in locating possible burial farms, it would be give me a better chance to locate possible burial sites. So, in relation to a construction of a new and larger helicopter platform in 2013 in the southern part of the village, workers found remains of stone walls and ashes. So, Helge Mikalsen and I went out there to register the remains. And while cleaning the walls, we found uh, remains that usually could be dated back to the Viking Age and early Middle Ages, such as worked soapstone and burned water roll stones. And later on, Hakon Adriasen found a ceramic piece of Hermes clay. So this structure is most likely part of a um, house structure, and it could be dated back topologically to the Viking Age. <coughs> Still in the southern part of this village, close to the helicopter platform, there's another structure which is partly visible in the surface. This is called Udiatoftene. The place name Udiatoftene indicates that there's a ruin in the landscape. So when I talk with Jonas Christiansen, the farmer and landowner in this area during survey 2015, he told me that uh, when he was a child and young man, there was a um, man called Olaver Ludersen, who's now passed away, that he had told them that he had found structures while doing cultivation in this area. And the stream running in this area is called Vata, and Vata indicates a stream for washing clothes. And often a farm is, um, the pharaohs is close to a, a stream, I see both in Larvoig and Kuivoig. So this evidence also suggests that there, are, there is a larger farm in this area. Another ruin of interest is uh, a ruin called Mormetl Gerar. It's no longer visible. Only the hay garden and a mitten is seen on the surface. So, but the uh, people I spoke uh, with in Fukla, they remember that the um, structure was there. But then they wanted to build uh, a road to make it bigger, so uh, everything was just uh, dug away. But um, Absala Lüdersen, he showed me where the building used to be, and also where the fireplaces used to be. 
So it's also good evidence that this area, Norr Middle Gerdau, has been an area with a farm and several domestic structures. So I decided to conduct more research here in form of geophysical surveying and doing small test excavations to locate possible burials in close vicinity to the, to the farm. But no burial was found but a collapsed uh, wall and also a drainage system. So from these uh, examples, based on the survey I did, the place name, the interviews, the ethnographic data and landscape folklore, I have set forward a suggestion of possible Viking Age or medieval farms and early burial sites in the village Chishja. There's more research needed, but here are some ideas to start with. The red circles on the map are possible farms, the blue circles show the possible location of burial grounds, and uh, in this area, you can also see there are many field boundaries and structures. So I have marked some of the field boundaries with a brown color, uh, and rivers and streams can also serve as field boundaries. And I marked the streams here with dark blue. In Chistia, there were probably three farms. Uh, it, the, the two that I already mentioned in the southern and northern part of the village. One of the southern part of the village is uh, Utja Toftene and where the helicopter, close to the helicopter platform as well. But there is a third one, which is in the middle of the village, underneath where the um, burial ground for the Black Death, the legend of the Black Death is. And because in um, 1905, men were digging in this area to build a boathouse and while they were digging they came down to a structure with fireplace in it um, and they found uh, items, objects as well which could very well also be topologically dated back to the Viking Age. Unfortunately nothing is left from this. And this site is also very close to the, to the church which I'm touched also mentioned that uh, a large farm was often in close relation to, to the church. And it was also here that uh, the second probable burial site is close to the old churchyard, um, where uh, at around 1900, where the um, churchyard was getting too small, so they needed to extend it. And while they were digging, they came down on several burial chambers. They were turned east and west, but, and had human remains in them. But the source, that, it does not mention how many burials were found, only that there were burials with human remains, and two of the burials had objects in them, with spinder walls and also lamp, a lamp, a clay lamp. Um, so I have heard from local people that there are around two to three burials chambers left. Yeah, uh, so it is not possible to conduct excavation, unfortunately, at the churchyard at the moment. But I have been pointed out where one of the burial chambers could still be. Um, a known it was decided uh, where the other burial ground possible is, was decided not to do test excavation because the area is covered in asphalt and as um, and there have been several other building uh, faces here with outhouses, so it would be too big uh, just for a small test excavation. But it's in my plans to, to do test excavation, especially after I heard that they had found a skull 50 years ago. So that would be a very interesting place. Um, yeah. So I have mentioned two possible uh, burial grounds and three farms. So the villages could very well have shared a burial ground. Um, and the village Chishja is not large. There are only 466 meters from the area of Norea Tofton and to the helicopter platform. And between the farms, there are approximately 200 meters. And the inland area is, is um, it's very little, so they used all they could for cultivation, and it's just um, for a hundred years ago they started to extend the outfield areas. So the burials must have been close to, not too far away from the farms. So even if the burials are not as visible in the fairies' landscapes as the settlements, they are highly significant. And by testing and developing new location models for the fairies' landscape, 
it is possible to get closer to learning about the relationship between burials and settlements, the relationship between the living and the dead in the Far East landscape. So now we will go to the burials at Chetnowik and Asante. At the moment, I am conducting a re-excavation of the excavation archives, but I will present here part of the work and bear in mind that this work is still in progress. So here you see uh, an overview of the burials. And as I mentioned before, there were only two verified Viking Age burial grounds found in the Faroes. This one in Chetnowik and one in Asante. And the burials in uh, Chetnowik, they were found by young boys who stumbled upon them. And there are tw 12 burials which lie very close to the seashore. And uh, these burials were not visible in the landscape, but they were covered with years of debris and sand. Pia Benneke, uh, who has now passed away, she analyzed the skeleton material and concluded that there were four adults, two newborns, one person over 15 years old, and five individuals of uh, uncertain uh, because of there's not enough skeleton material. The skeleton material for Viking Age burial in the Pharaohs is really bad. So. And there are not many objects found at the burial site, but there are variation in the direction of the burials, as you can see in the plan. So after excavating the burials in Chetnavuik, Sveridal published just one article about just one burial, which was burial number one, which is a relatively well-preserved burial, um, considered and um, comparing with the rest of the burials. Several of the bones were in bad condition, but he excavated a right femur, fragments of a left femur, right tibia, one of the fibulas, and fragments of bones and foot, and almost a complete set of teeth. And Pia Benik interpreted this individual to be female, between 20 and 40 years old, and around 150 centimeters tall. The teeth were very worn. The body was placed with the head in an east-north-east direction, laying on the left side facing south towards the land, not facing towards the sea. So again, towards the settlement. The grave itself was in inside measurements, 1.5 meter in length and 0.5 meter in width. And when excavated uh, the burial, uh, Sveridal observed that um, there were upright stones placed in a square surrounding the grave, and some of the stones had then fallen down because of, of pressure. This woman was buried with a ring pin, interpreted to come from North Stopton area. And uh, Sveridal understood the custom, burial custom, to be of Norwegian burial customs, traditions but the artifact itself resembled more Viking Age burials in the British Isles. And to the bottom of the ring, a thread was fixed, and there was also used to be a piece of cloth, which is no longer part of the, yeah, of the archival material, unfortunately. So uh, uh, this is burial number five, and the burial was aligned northeast, southwest, and the condition of the human remains were very poor, and what's left today are traces of the cranium, bone bits, lower jaw, and some teeth splints. In this burial, there was also an iron object, uh, interpreted by um, Sveridal to be a knife. So, and this burial was also very um, well constructed by water rolled stones and appeared on the surface to be, a, to be in the form of a bolt. When he was digging down, it, it, it seems like this burial looked like with the stone settings to be a bolt stone setting. Uh, the burial was disturbed and the cranium was found close to the knees and part of the jaw uh, was, still in, was, was still in where the head had originally been. And, and he saw that this had been disturbed in antiquity. Uh, most of the human remains were not visible, only as traces, and it seems that the individual was laid on the side, but it was not able, he was not able to determine in which direction the individual was facing. And according to the analysis done by Pia Benneke, it was not possible to sex the individual in the burial, 
but the individual must have been over 15 years old. And then there's uh, burial number eight, and uh, it was roughly aligned east-west. And in the report, Sverdal writes that it's uh, almost empty, so only one could vaguely just see tin bones, and deeper in the burial, there were, the bones were very soft. And he found it very difficult to make any sense of this burial. So he couldn't describe uh, which side it was lying on or in which direction the individual was facing. In the burial, he found an iron buckle and, and on it was the traces of fiber. Sverdal describes that he finds charcoal in relation to the burial, but not in the burial itself. And uh, it's interpreted that this burial was a newborn. Uh, the individual was a newborn. And Santa, the excavation in 1989 took place because the local council uh, was planning to extend the churchyard. So it's the same situation as we had in Fukla and Chischa, where they needed to extend the churchyard because it was getting full. An earlier excavation had shown that near and underneath the modern church, there were several faces of the old church and in addition, a possible longhouse close to the church. Uh, at the Santa Vichishigar, there were seven burials were excavated out of 11 burials. But um, it is quite certain that the burials continue underneath the old churchyard. The burial site itself seems to be a very well organized burial site, with the burials in parallel rows uh, aligned east-west with the head in the west. And the burials are disturbed by cultivation, and many of the individuals in the burials are buried with objects, suggesting that they may come from an early Christian context in which burial customs were in transition. Even if the overall picture shows that the burial look very similar, they are also individually quite different in terms of layout and also associated objects. The state of the skeleton material is not very good, mostly the teeth are left. But the uh, Pia Benneke analysis showed that there's a child between 7 and 14 years old. There were four young people between 16 and 20, and two individuals between 30 and 50 years old. So in burial G6B, the individual was laid on the back, and there also seems to be traces of a coffin. Uh, this was a male, 18 years of age, and was about 180 centimeters tall. The grey was marked on the surface with a frame of larger stones and covered with smaller stones. Therefore, the burial would have been visible at one point. On one end of the burial where the head was, in the west end, is marked with a large stone. It seems that the burial was buried in a coffin, as I mentioned, because of the wood remains. But there were a few objects found in this burial. There was an iron knife with silver threads uh, woven around the handle. There was a bronze ring seven weights in three pairs, and each pair had a circular and rectangular weight. There was fragment of a purse, and it's possible that there was a letter purse inside the woven pouch, and there was a strap band which is ornamented with an animal head, and there is still a piece of letter inside this strap band. There's a bronze fragment, and the bronze fragment uh, is decorated with inter laced motive, which could be Irish in origin. Uh, so there's also silver uh, fragments, which are probably hacked silver. In the burial K5A, uh, the individual was a female, estimated to be 20 years old. A stone setting is setting around, is around the burial, and uh, several of these stones were placed on edge, and a larger stone was set at each end of the burial. So, and here, um, Nils Hashman and Svaredal, they found iron knife with silver bindings around the shaft, and beads, two of amber, two of glass. A uh, third amber was destroyed, amber bead was destroyed. So there's also fragments of a bone comb with the bronze rivets, and there's a silver coin, and this silver coin had been chipped. It's an Arabic Kufi coin, which may have been deposited in the burial sometime between 80, um, 850 and 90, 900. Um, 
This individual in burial K5D is probably female, under 20 years old, and it's similar to K5A in construction with a stone setting around the burial. The objects found was an iron knife, a silver ring, finger ring, and there was also beads. Three were made of bone and one small glass, blue glass bead. And two amber beads were dissolved in the sand. Yeah. So I will now continue to discuss verified, uh, probably impossible burial sites in the Faroe Islands during the Viking Age. Here you see a map which shows the location of the burials mentioned. Uh, the burials which have been verified archaeologically are Chetnubuik, Asante and Kvalban. And the other burials on the map are probably lo burial locations which are Chishcha, Zwina, and possible is uh, Jilianes and Huov. In total, seven burial sites. Probably burial sites have been found in the Zwina in the summer of uh, 1998. Yeah, 1898, and in Chishcha around 1900. And in Sweden, this was when men, they were leveling the ground for a hay storage facility, and during their work, they discovered a burial, which description suits very well to be a Viking Age burial. So as these men were digging, they come down to plants, and they didn't look, they were about, they were almost two meters down, and so, they didn't expect to find anything, so they just hacked their way through these planks. But when they lifted them, they saw it looked it, it was a boat which was turned upside down with its keel, keel in the air. And underneath the boat, uh, they saw human remains which were quickly dissolved when they got into contact with air. The burial was aligned north south. Unfortunately, it has not been possible to examine this area further because a storage house is where the burial used to be and the road around the storage house is covered in asphalt. It's part of my landscape analysis though. So as mentioned above in Chishja, there were these burials that were discovered in relation to uh, an old extension of an old churchyard, even though they had uh, turned like east-west, like those of Santa, there were uh, burials, two of the burials that had objects in them. And it suggests a Viking Age stage for possible very early Christian burials, the second one and the one as we, uh, one more of a more non-Christian burial. So uh, the lack of burials have been observed in previous articles, both by Sveridal and Sumin Aroki and Nils Hashman. And, uh, but even though there are this lack of burials, there is no lack of mounds associated with place names and folklore linking burials with mounds. Uh, Sveridal mentioned that in the past people have tried to excavate these mounds, but with no great luck in locating the, any burials in the mounds. Even though he thinks there are two mounds which could be uh, possibly burial grounds. And these are Haugrumsgrove uh, Grove in Hove and Suroy, and Hötteshegur in Gilianes in Vavor. In 1835, the mound Haugrumsgrove was being excavated by a local farmer. And while he was digging, he found raised stones. And when he was digging deeper, he found bones and iron pieces. Today, these three remains are lost. As I understood, they were sent to Denmark, but somehow they got lost. So uh, the site has been excavated and disturbed, so the question if it would be possible to find evidence of a burial. So based on this description of this burial, it could be possible it is a burial site. At Chilianes, <clears throat> at a small mound called Ötteshegur, a burial had been found in the early 19th century, where the farmer was cultivating the area. Together with the burial, some objects were found and also uh, remains, bones, but it is not described more in detail, and today these remains are lost. I conducted geophysic in this area, but the result was very difficult to determine if there were any other burials. Um, so it would though be interesting of doing more research in this area to examine if there are any burials. But since Chilianes is not part of my main study area, it was decided not to conduct any small-scale test excavation, 
but I had it as part of my um, landscape analysis. Yeah. So at the center, Simon Arke and uh, Nils Hashman found it difficult to determine if the recently excavated individuals followed a Christian burial practice, a non-Christian burial practice, or a transition phase from heathendom to Christianity. According to Simon Arke and Nils Hashman, the question if the site is Christian or non-Christian burial is still open for debate. Stefan Stolman Hansen points out that almost no classical Viking Age burials have been found in the Faroe Islands. He claims that since almost no burials, non-Christian non burials have been found, he suggests that the Faroes in the Viking Age were part of a Christian or partly Christianized Hiberno-Scandinavian world. Stefan Stolman Hansen suggests that the answer in finding these burials may be in the early church sites. On the other hand, Louis Zagariasen has written that many of the Faroe Islands' culture heritage is lost due to cultivation and building construction on the same place from one generation and to the next. And he also points forward that the possibility that people living in the past probably did not pay too much attention, attention to the architecture and the objects which they found during cultivation and building construction. This was just <clears throat> because these did not have any work-related function or value, and they were just thrown away. And since um, Viking Age burials are very difficult to observe in the Faroe soil, they're almost just the teeth that are visible, it might also have been difficult for people to notice if they had been digging a burial. And I think Louis Zagariasen has a good point here. Before the Second World War and after the Second World War, many people in the Faroes wanted to have new roads and build new buildings. Old objects and building remains, which were found during construction work, were often not much valued. Another reason for the missing reports of the burials to the authorities could very well be that people were superstitious of what would happen. For example, in Suina, they decided to cover the burial and then just continue the work. And on Chishja, finds of human remains, as those of Echnum, were not reported to the authorities. Yeah. So the findings of human bones in the Faroe Islands have mostly been discovered accidentally by boys who stumbled upon them when playing. The circumstances of this finding raise certain questions, such as why have so few Viking Age burials been found in the Faroe Islands? Have people been aware of the burials? but have not mentioned them. And are there other places in the Faroes where burials have been found, but not reported to the authorities? Another strong possibility emerges. The people living in the Faroe Islands in the Viking Age seems to have been burying their loved ones differently than in, for example, Iceland. This is very interesting because it can provide information on the location of other possible burials. So this brings forward new questions, such as, is there a continuation in using the same cemeteries from the Viking Age onwards to today? How the burials disappeared due to erosion in the Far East landscape? This research demonstrates that we need to reconsider the location of Viking Age burials. And also, there's a long continuity of settlements and burial places in the Faroe Islands. And the research shows that the burials could very well be below modern-day villages, below and on outskirts of modern-day cemeteries, and also possibly disturbed. This helps to explain why so few Viking Age burials have been found so far. This has important implications for heritage management within towns and villages, and will also help me to design a strategy for testing possible locations of Viking Age burial grounds in the future. Last, thank you for your time.